stay a while and listen. What is going on, my fellow nerds? Abrasive Otter here bringing you another episode of Stay a While and Listen. Today we're going to be discussing cooldown reduction and how it's calculated in the game via its diminishing returns. Cooldown reduction is a staple for a lot of top tier meta builds. In fact, for the four man meta, four of the five builds, whether you run Impaled Demon Hunter or COE Hydra Wizard as the RG killer, must run certain CDR breakpoints in order to function optimally. So without further ado, let's get into it. So something that we've all noticed with cooldown reduction is that it's not cumulative. In easier terms, you can't just add up all of your cooldown reduction and your gear, paragon, and gems to get a true cooldown reduction value, right? Cooldown reduction functions much like a logarithmic expression. If you don't know what that means, here's a picture illustrating the general direction that cooldown reduction follows. Note that cooldown reduction is not a logarithmic expression because you have changing variables. So for all you math nerds out there, you can't just input a logarithmic equation and accurately come out with your true cooldown reduction value. This logarithmic flow of results is known much better by players called diminishing returns. What this does is prevents us from achieving 100% cooldown reduction in our builds because that would, you know, only be busted as fuck. So this is the equation that cooldown reduction follows. 1 minus, in parentheses, 1 minus the decimal value of your percent cooldown reduction in item, passive, or gem, times 1 minus the decimal value of your next percent cooldown reduction in item, passive, or gem, and so on and so forth until all the cooldown reduction values have been accounted for in the equation. So for example, let's say I have three pieces of gear that have 6, 8, and 10% cooldown reduction. The equation would look like this. 1 minus in parentheses, 1 minus 0 0.06 times 1 minus 0 0.08 times 1 minus 0.1, or better, 1 minus and the whole thing, 0.94 times 0.92 times 0.9. Note it does not matter what order you put these values in because this equation follows the commutative property of multiplication, meaning the order of multiplication does not matter because the resultant will remain the same regardless. Now, if you are a math nerd or the fuck it, you, you don't have time for that bullshit, Here's a site that calculates your true CDR value. All you do is enter your cooldown reduction values of each item, passive or gem, and poof, true cooldown reduction. I will leave a link for this site in the description below. Now let's move on to the Excel charts and data to better understand how this is incorporated with the current meta. All right guys, so we can see here, it's kind of like that logarithmic flow I was talking about, right? You know, it kind of like curves up to the right and whatever the case may be. Now each point is, you know, added 4% to your CDR. And then the important thing that we want to grasp in this is like, let's say we were at 20%, like we had 20% in our gear and obviously that's, you know, less than 20%, but we want to add eight more, which is going to be this point right here, right? What do we get? We get we're at 19 and we go up to 20, 25, you say? Okay, so that's a 6% increase in the CDR. But let's go up to 60%. I say I want to add 8% more, right? We're going from like, what, 46 to 50? So we get 4%. So it's 6% versus 4%, right? So that that means is if I have more cooldown reduction, then more cooldown reduction is going to mean less and less and less and less and less the more I add, right? So that's what it means via like diminishing returns. So now we're going to go to the main CDR page. Now I know it looks a little daunting at first, but I'm going to go over it real quick, all right? So just follow me along. All right, so... Right here we have the gear and all the, the specific rules that you can roll CDR on with the diamond and the helm being at 12.5%. All right, we have Paragon, Gem, Gogok of Swiftness, and then the passives. Now all of these values that are gonna be calculated out here are for max cooldown reduction that affect every single skill for every single class, right? Like every single skill. So things like Dawn and Pride of Cassius are not included in this chart because they react with a specific skill this is for every single skill all right now up here we have this formula we have one minus you know and then all this super long this is the one that we ran before but it's a lot longer right so you can kind of see why this is a super thorn in my ass when i actually have to calculate this out for every single class being you know whatever ability i need to figure out for so it's kind of bleh. but what happens is, is like what is this a equal right well this a equals right here with the weapon percentage all right and when we do one minus a we get 0.9 and so you can kind of enter these values accordingly across hand if you're running max of yarn whatever and get that now note that if you're running a Leorx crown in your build you do not apply the h all right you take that out and you apply the n the reason being is because Leorx actually adds the double effect of the diamond being 12.5 percent 
uh, before it actually calculates it into the formula. All right, so if you take 0.875 and you multiply it by 0.875 again, you are not going to get 0.75, all right? It's gonna be a different value. So you need to actually input this value so you actually get the true amount of CDR that you're going for. Now these values right here, note that before I go into this, these are not applying the Vigilante belt and they're not applying the set bonuses from Borns or Captain Crimson's. And the reason being for that is because I'm pretty sure there's no meta build out there that runs Vigilante or Captain Crimson's and Borns. All right, could be mistaken. There could be some fucking weird ass build out there in Korea or Europe that runs it, but I'm not aware of one. So these are without those uh, values being input. All right, and then these ones are not using Leorix these ones are using Leorix, all right? So we're gonna find out like, what is the maximum amount of CDR that I can run on a Barbarian or a Demon Hunter that's running two weapons, all right? Now, if I were to add up all the CDR being this right here, it would be 97.5%. But if, when I apply this equation to diminishing returns, I get 64.27%. And then with Leorix, I get 69.37%, right? And so on and so forth. Just note that when you're running, uh, two weapons, you're obviously going to get more cooldown reduction than one weapon because an offhand can only run 8%, whereas, you know, another weapon can roll 10%. So you're getting 2% more with two weapons than you are with a weapon and an offhand, all right? Now, what we want to know is, like, how does this apply to, you know, standard meta builds, all right? Now, these are relevant to four-man meta builds, all right? So solo builds like the LOM Bomb Crusader, not included in this, all right? Didn't do the calculation for that. I'm sure you guys can figure it out after this video, all right? These are the common meta builds and the CDR that's needed. Now, so let's go for like ZDPS Barbarian. The skill that they want to keep up 100% of the time, like 100% uptime, is Ignore Pain. You need Ignore Pain up all the time to give your team that damage reduction, right? The skill of cooldown is actually 30 seconds, but with Pride of Cassius um, and the added 5 seconds, it's actually 19 seconds. So you have a 19 second like downtime that you're trying to, you know, shave off. And the required CDR that you need is 57.25%. Now notice that this does not include Gogok, so I made it easy for you guys. So if you're running any of these builds, all you have to do is stand in town, press your uh, inventory, go to your details, and this is the number that you want to hit when you look at your cooldown reduction, all right? That's the number that you want to hit. And the community CDR that you need in order to achieve that between your gear, your parrot, and your gem, gem being your diamond, not your Gogok, uh, needs to be 79%. And the leeway that you have between all the pieces of your gear is 16% with two weapons or 14% with one weapon naturally, all right? So you have a 16% leeway room. You know, you can, there's two items that you don't have to roll cooldown reduction in in order to have this 100% uptime with Ignore Pain. And, you know, so far and so forth with everything. Just note that for the monks, um, if you're able to hit the Inner Sanctuary cooldown breakpoint, then you naturally hit the Epiphany breakpoint, all right? That's just natural for you right there. The one I want to look at, though, is the COE Hydra build. Now, technically, on perfect rotation, you only have to run 62.75%, but that's like you're hitting your rotation perfectly every single time. I'm telling you right now, as an experienced COE Hydra player, that's never going to happen. All right, you're never going to be able to perfectly rotate throughout the entire grip. You're going to be talking to your buddies. You're not going to be paying attention. You're going to need to reposition. Shit happens. You know, the rule of life. Shit, shit happens. So. Optimally, I would go for more than 64%, anything more than 64%, all right? And that means that you have a 4.5% leeway room, all right? That means you have to run cooldown reduction every single piece. And if you think you're the biggest dick wizard in the world and don't have to do it, well, then you don't have to run cooldown reduction in your amulet, and you can run the 1,000 intelligence if you want to, but um, you're getting 5% more damage than me and putting a huge risk at the fact that you're going to have to re-rotate because you fucked up your convention and now you're gonna lose all your momentum and you might as well add another minute and so i kind of gain that damage back because i'm just able to perfectly rotate every single time just note that the orange values right here those are builds that use leorix all right i know for the monk you can run a yuli variant uh but it's subpar to the leorix with the band of the root chambers so this is just for the leorix being the band of the root chambers variant all right and the other variant you're gonna have to calculate out somewhere else but those are the values for the four-man meta. So that concludes this episode of Stay A While and Listen, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you think of a topic you'd like for me to cover next, let me know in the comment section below. I'm Abrazer Vodder, and as always, take it easy.